so I'm Matthew. I'm Gabriella. And we're here today to talk about 10 life lessons that we've learned from riding motorcycles. Motorcyclist passing the other way, you always wave. 
And uh, I tend to be, I can be a little judgmental and dismissive of certain people. And uh, I've learned that you always wave, no matter if the guy's riding a completely different bike from you. And they always wave back, um, almost always. And it, it helps us to be a community. And it, it says, you know, hey, we're, we're, we're out there, we're exposed to the elements. And that other rider is acknowledging, like, hey, man, good on you, you're out on a bike. And you feel, um, even though you may have different costumes on, uh, you may, your bikes may sound different or look different, you're uh, acknowledging that you're part of a community. And it's good for me to practice that, to uh, acknowledge others and, and judge less and just be like, right on, man. So that's my, that was that one. <laughs> All right, uh, my next one is actually pretty similar to, to yours. Um, uh, motorcycle, motorcycling and, and even doing skydiving beforehand, um, it taught me really much what a real connection uh, feel like with people. Uh, I, I think because um, uh, in motorcycling um, and any, any other adventure or sports, you are just so much more vulnerable. Um, you are so much like, putting yourself at risk and then, and then others are appreciating that. It creates a real community and then people are so much more coming forward helping you and then and, and even the people who you make friends with, it's it's much deeper connection than what you could just get on, on, on any other um, like way of, of meeting people most of the time. So I really enjoy that and then knowing how it feels like, helping you appreciate the other friendships, you know, what you could make and you kind of know what you are going for and what, are, what is what you actually want to keep and cherish. Right on. Uh, my next one, my fourth one, is uh, similar to my last one. And not only do we always wave to other motorcyclists, uh, the rule that was also handed down to me from other people that got me into biking was if you see somebody on the side of the road broken down, you always, always stop because someday that could be you that has almost everything you need to fix a flat, but you're just missing one tool. So, uh, you know, and it doesn't matter if it's a Harley guy or a KTM guy or whatever, you always, um, you do that, you, you know, you do unto others as you would have them do to you. And, and it's, you know, the unlikeliest of people have helped me when, uh, when I thought, um, you know, when I would be stuck somewhere, we've been helped by preachers, uh, by Harley riders, and everybody in between. So um, always pulling over to, to see if somebody else needs help. Usually they don't. Usually they got it covered and they're just uh, smoking a cigarette or hanging out. But a lot of times, if they need a hand, you can be the one that runs, runs and get them a, a gallon of gas or whatever. So, all right, what's your next one? So my last one is something which I'm... Uh I think out of all of the, the five that I um, listed here is the thing which I'm working on the most and really trying to like get it into my life is that uh, when things get rough, stand up. Um, especially on rocky sections, right, on a motorcycle. Um, when, it, when things get really bumpy and rough, standing up makes a whole lot of different, uh, difference and that is what you should do and then things get much easier than afterwards. Same thing I find it true in life, you know. Um, so many times when things at work get rough or like in your relationship, you need to stand up for yourself um, and really realize like what is what you need and speak it out and just, um, and, and that will help you get through that situation faster, safer, better for you. Exactly. And I've, I've certainly seen you uh, do that. Um, my last one is um, just being open to where the road will take you. Uh, about eight years ago, I was working on a project, and I had ridden my, we were doing the Trans-America Trail with, with two buddies, and we, we had ridden across all of America, and after Nevada, when we hit Oregon, I was just blown away, and I was like, this is, this place is amazing, uh, no diss on Texas, but I lived there for 30 years, and when I hit Oregon, I was like, what in the world am I doing living in Texas? when Oregon has deserts and forests and ocean and canyons and rivers and um, it's really been an interesting process. Um, and, you know, my career hasn't been what I thought it would be and I had a divorce and, you know, if I hadn't done the Trans-America Trail, I wouldn't have moved to Oregon. When I moved to Oregon, I got a divorce because she didn't want to live here. Um, but then, because I'm open to where the road takes me, uh, my fortunes turned out <laughs> ridiculously well. So, um, 
And a lot of that uh, is what um, is included in the story. Uh, I have a book called The Topography of Fear. It's finally available, eight years in the making. And it was uh, the first time I did the Trans America Trail, there were, um, I was facing a lot of fears and some of, the tr some of the trip did not go the way we expected. And uh, things unraveled pretty bad. And we completed the trail, sort of. And when I met Gabriella, she said, we must go do the parts of the trail you missed. And that's what the second, the part two of this book is, is us going directly to the parts that freaked me out and facing those fears head on. And uh, I think it's a pretty intriguing story. I think it's uh, parts of it are funny. You um, definitely get to look way too deeply into my neuroses. And, uh, but there's a lot of laughs, too. So um, this is available at thetopographyoffear.com. You can order them uh, signed or just regular. And uh, I'll be shipping them out myself. Um, and I can, if you need them signed to your nephew or your brother, um, I'd be happy to do that. It also has uh, pictures on si inside of uh, our journey. And um, anyways, I appreciate you guys listening today. And again, if you like this kind of content, like and subscribe. And the t whoever, the first two people to guess where she's from, um, we'll, get, we'll throw in a copy of the book. So again, we really appreciate you watching. And we'll see you down the road. Thank you.